Hi guys, this is Creative Cuts, a channel where I build, paint and create things. Have you ever wondered how beautiful dappled light through leaves can be? The warm sun of a midsummer's afternoon walk? Chaos! Enough of that wishy-washy rubbish. Embrace your nightmares, it's time to release the demons, to bask in chaos. With the new and, might I say, eagerly awaited and oh so long overdue release of the new Chaos Codex on the horizon, I thought it was time that I showed my Chaos Space Marine Army some love by building a nice new Chaos themed piece of terrain. Something that could be used in a narrative campaign or or just something that looks cool as a tabletop centerpiece. Either way, something that springs from the darkest corners of the mind. And so to begin, I grab my box of offcuts. This is XPS foam from previous projects. Great stuff, but not cheap, so I generally keep any larger usable offcuts. I cut a small sheet of plywood I had spare as a base and started to stack a few pieces of foam to fill out a basic shape. I wanted to create an arch type shape and and quickly realised that I would need to have a bit more stability as the foam was sliding around a bit. For this I used some thin bamboo skewers and, and clipped these to size with some snips. Once dry I had a pretty solid base to work into. I took my hot wire cutter and began to give the foam a bit of a shave, little pieces at a time. I didn't really have any plan here, just try to create a more organic shape. If you cut away too much you can always glue it back on. I had some pieces of tree bark that I had collected from the park. I find that bark has a great texture and is a great alternative when making rocks. I cut these into small pieces and began to glue these around the base of my arch. I imagined this chaotic arch had forced its way through the ground and thrust itself into existence. I used a hot glue gun for this as it really allows you to work very quickly. I found that building these up in layers, almost like petals of a flower, worked really nicely. I wanted these rocks to feel rugged and sharp and still have enough space for larger models to pass through the middle. I mixed a bit of sculptor mold to fill in some of the gaps and visually join the arch to the ground. You can get messy with it and use your fingers or use a glove and a stick to get into all those hard to reach places and save your hands getting messy. Next I took some thick gauge but very flexible wire. I got this in a pack of multiple thicknesses used for creating wire sculptures. Nice and cheap from Amazon. I taped the ends up and twisted a few wires together and then proceeded to wrap this around my foam arch. Again, no real plan here, just going on what feels right. I wanted the arch to almost be bound or constrained as it writhes through the earth. I took this idea of constraint a step further and decided to add some plastic chain that I'd found somewhere. At the time I didn't know what I would use it for but I had good faith that a project would come along where it would be useful. I fixed one end of the chain to keep it in place and then wrapped it around the foam. I felt that these layers of materials would help give lots of visual detail. Another random thing I'd collected and saved was this skeleton spider. It was a bit big to use whole, but I thought the legs could be really creepy. I cut the legs off and then started to glue these onto the arch. I wanted this arch to feel alive, a living nightmare if you will. I tried to space these evenly, but not symmetrically. For extra stability, I drilled a small hole into the base of the legs and inserted a small length of wire. I also had a plastic snake skeleton, which you can see in the background. I got these last Halloween, I think. I cut up some of the ribs to create a kind of wishbone shapes and glued them into the arch. I 
I also had a few offcuts from miniatures that I'd used for various conversions or kit bashing goodness, and various chaosy bits and bobs. I glued these onto the arch and using all these different items at different scales really gives you a sense of something being really massive. After all, you're going to need some pretty big chains to hold back a mega demon. Now all these disparate parts needed to be joined together so I mixed up some more sculptor mold and plugged the gaps. I covered some parts so they looked like they were emerging from inside the arch. Once dry, I was really happy that my arch now looked pretty nightmarish. This unformed, writhing mess of legs and claws really looks like it could be straight from hell. It was a little difficult to see exactly what was going on here because of all the different colours, so I primed everything black. Using an airbrush for this really helped me to get into all the little nooks and crannies. I also took the opportunity to begin to add some ground texture to the base. I spread out some thin PVA and then Sprinkled some of my basing mix made up of various sizes of small stones, some soil, and tile grout. A quick spray of some isopropyl alcohol helps the thin PVA soak right into the mixture and lock everything into place. I then sprayed some white ink from above to quickly add some highlights and bring out the definition of shapes and some details. Once the ground was dry, I sprayed this black also. Again, this just helped pull everything together. I added some brown to the rocks and pulled this colour down into the ground. I kept this very light and uneven, allowing some black to show through from underneath. And then knock this back with some grey. Once I had a base of colour down I could add some extra details as these would have been difficult to paint otherwise. I added some small jewellery chain and wound this around various parts of the arch and legs. And while I was at it, I used the chain to string up this chaos symbol as a central feature. I also added a few skulls here and there just because skulls. I deepened some of the shadows by spraying some black into the lower areas of the arch. I loosely touched the brass chain with a fine mist of black as it looked a bit bright. I then added some crackle effect from AK Interactive to the base of the arch to try to create an effect as if the ground was literally cracking. I applied this very thick, as from previous experience, the thicker you apply this, the deeper the cracks. I decided to pick out some parts in red, just to add a little bit of colour as it was feeling a bit monotone. I added some dirty down rust effect to some of the metal areas. This is by far my favourite Rust product that I've tried and those familiar with the channel will know how much I rave about this product. And once the crackle paint was dry, I was really happy with the effect. I coated this in black to make the deepest parts the darkest. I 
I also felt that the red I had applied to some of the legs was a, a little bit bright. So I knocked these back while I still had some black loaded up in my airbrush. I picked out some details in the ground with a little light grey just to pick out the higher raised areas. And then knocked all this back again with some dark homemade wash. Very similar to Agrax Earthshade, just some black and brown ink, water and some flow aid. And there we go. This crazy chaotic amalgamation of twisted metal, horns and of course lots of spikes will provide the perfect terrain piece for Abaddon to lead his hordes of chaos into battle. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to support the channel you can show YouTube your appreciation by hitting the like button. You can subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest videos and share it with a friend who might find it interesting. Thank you for joining me into this nightmare and enjoy. Mm-hmm.